Welcome back to Monday Mod Tips, I'm Captain Xavier, and today we are going to be covering blaster diagnostics, or in simpler terms, how to figure out why your flywheel blaster doesn't work. Uh, I have gotten an inordinate number of uh, comments and emails and IMs and all sorts of other messages where someone says, my strife doesn't work, what's wrong with it? And that's not nearly enough for me to go on, uh, because there are a number of areas in even the strife, which is a very, very simple flywheel blaster, that can go wrong, and you pretty much have to test them one at a time until you figure out where the failure is. And so we're going to go over that because this is a blaster that somebody sent me that doesn't work. And so we're going to go through all the diagnostic steps and hopefully we can figure out what's wrong with it because I haven't figured out yet. So, first thing you should always test are your batteries. He did send it with batteries in it. They are just regular alkaline batteries. And if you're going to be doing any amount of diagnostics, I highly recommend getting some sort of a battery tester. They're really cheap on eBay and they work just fine. Uh, we'll do any number of sizes. They will do uh, IMRs. I wouldn't recommend putting a lipo in it. It would probably blow the thing up. But uh, testing all the batteries. They are all good. So uh, as long as they are making contact, that is not the issue. Now, you can actually tell from the fading on the plastic, I don't know how easily you can tell, but this should be a much darker, and we'll see it more when we get the, the shell open. Uh, so this thing has spent some time outdoors, and there is corrosion on one of the battery leads. Not a lot, but it doesn't necessarily take a lot. So we are going to take a file... Make sure that there is at least some exposed metal there. Put the batteries back in. Okay, the jam door is closed. Still nothing. No rev whatsoever. So let's get it open. Luckily they sent it to me already opened. Never tinker with your blaster with the batteries in it, even stock batteries. It's just not a good idea. Now you can really see the uh, discoloration there. So this thing has been uh, left out and there is dirt all over the inside of it. Um, so it could be water damage. That is a very distinct possibility. The first thing that we're going to want to test, uh, I'm going to start with the motors themselves. So, we will need to take out some of the internals. So the first thing that is very obvious upon getting inside is that this thing has a lot of water damage. Uh, you can see all kinds of corrosion and rust. There's also been something living in here. So that's, you know, fun. Spider egg sacks. Lovely. Anyway, um, very rusted, but we can still test. And what we're going to use to test is a 9 volt battery. Just a regular 9 volt battery and a 9 volt battery attachment thing. So this clips on here, and now we have wires that we can just directly touch to the internals. So we are going to do that. We are just going to touch the wires directly to the leads on the motor. And these motors do spin up, but they are really not happy about it. Um, they're spinning up very slow and they're making a lot of unpleasant noise. So yeah, they're damaged and they will need to be replaced. But they are still spinning up. So that isn't the ultimate failure point. And we're going to need to work our way further back. So if it's not the motors, the next likely culprit are the switches. Because there are three switches altogether, and if any one of them fails, then the blaster will not operate when you uh, pull the trigger. So, it seems the motors have finally given up the ghost. But, we, I can still explain it. So, after you've tested the motors, if they are spinning up, you know the motors are fine. And so what you're going to do 
is you're just going to hook the negative to here permanently because it doesn't need to go anywhere after this point, most likely. Uh, and you're going to test the positive wire that's coming off by going to the far side of the switch and connecting it there. And if the motors spin up when you do that, then you know that this wire is okay. After that, you're going to go to the far side of the switch, to the part that is connected when you push the switch. Which in the case of these stock um, switches, the center one is the com. And then this is your normally open, and this is your normally closed. You can see my switch video if you need to know what that means. So when the switch is not pressed, these two are connected. And that's why it's connecting a negative in, and you get electric braking. When you push it, it then connects the positive line. So we are going to connect to the far side of the switch and press the switch. And if the motor spins up, then you know that this switch is okay. And we then move on to the next switch, which in this case would probably be the uh, magazine detection switch. So we're going to have to take apart some more of the blaster to get to that. All right, and this switch, you can see the water damage before you even get it out of there. So there's rust on there, so there was probably water, and there's a good chance this switch was the one that was bad. Um, we will need to, we'd need the thing to be working at all to confirm that, and right now it's not. So, we would do the same thing here. This one only has two positions. Um, it either connects or it doesn't connect. This is a simpler switch. And this is, again, completing the positive circuit. So you would need to connect first to the far side to make sure that it's not the cable that's the problem, and then complete this switch. Then go to the far side and connect your battery to that, and then press both switches. And if it connects, then you know it's good. And if both of those, if the motors spin when you test both of those, we move back to the next switch. And this one also very clearly has water damage and rust, and so it could also have been the one that was bad. And we're going to do the exact same thing here. First we would connect to the far side of the switch, the one that goes to the next switch, and then we would have to press both of these switches and see if it connects and if it doesn't move to the far or if it does then move to the far side of the switch and now you would need to press all three switches and if it works then we know that all of the switches are okay and we need to go back and look at the battery housing if at any point you can't get it to spin by connecting to a switch and pressing the switch then you know that that switch is bad and you need to repair that or replace that switch now a lot of the reason that we uh, remove most of these switches, most people will remove the jam door switch and the magazine switch because there is no downside to dry firing a flywheel blaster. Uh, it's not like a springer, like a stampede, where you don't want to dry fire your stampede because it's bad for the mechanism. Uh, there is no downside to being able to rev and pull the trigger on a flywheel blaster that's got nothing in the chamber because you're not going to be damaging anything. So we typically take these out because they just represent a point of failure and they're not actually useful. So um, we tend to scrap them and just go directly from the battery housing to the rev switch to the motors and just be done with it. And that is what I'm going to do with this one once I uh, go to replace the internals is I'm going to replace everything. Um, I don't know which one of these switches is bad. They're probably, at least these two are probably broken beyond repair. And the motors are now toast. Uh, but the battery housing looked okay, so that is good. Uh, but I will tear all of the wiring out, tear all of the switches out, and replace uh, the motors with good stock motors, and uh, send this thing back. So that is how I do diagnostics. You can go from the other direction, which is start at the battery housing, and in that case you'll need uh, either an LED that you've got wires for, or a motor that you've got wires for, and you will connect the motor directly up to the, to the negative and positive coming out of the battery housing, 
And if it works there, okay, your battery housing is good. Okay, move the positive to the switch. Check the switch. Does it spin when you uh, press the switch? Yes, okay, move to the next switch, and so on and so forth. Um, I like to, to use the battery because it's just a little bit more convenient, um, and I can test the, the motors that are actually in the blaster as I work my way back. So that is my recommendation for how to diagnose a flywheel blaster. Start at the motors and work your way back through all of the switches. Um, and if you eventually find the failure point, then replace that component, and your blaster should then work. So... If you have any questions, comments, concerns, suggestions, ideas, better ways of doing this, go ahead and put that in the comments below. I hope this was helpful, and thank you for watching.